Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere because I have something super important to tell you. But before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment with in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. So most of you know that I've only consistently been making YouTube videos since about the beginning of June. And the videos that I make are the most common issues that I see come into the shop. Most of the videos I make either have my own personal equipment in it or it's customer's equipment that, you know, I feel is going to save you time, money, and frustration to learn how to fix it all by yourself. Now, even though we get in over 2,000 pieces of equipment to the shop every year, that doesn't mean that we actually fix 2,000 pieces because a lot of those are not worth fixing to the customer and a lot of the time we end up with them because the customer just doesn't even want it anymore. So now that we've slowed down a little bit, it gives me a chance to look around the shop, see what customers have left us throughout the year and see what has potential to run again. So the first video I did on this was a few days ago and I put it out, it was called Turning Shop Trash Into Treasure and it was awesome. So I looked through everything outside and had my sights set. I found a Simpson pressure washer that I was pretty sure had a good engine and a bad pump. It had been sitting outside for a long time so I had to get it running again to check the pump but once I did I realized that yeah, it was for sure toast. I did have another pump that I had sitting around the shop with a broken piece on it that I wasn't able to sell to a customer, put that on it, and I'm keeping this pressure washer. It's a $400 pressure washer that looks almost brand new with a Kohler 6.5 horsepower on it. It ended up being total treasure for me. Now, what I found astounding, though, after I made the video, I had so many comments and inbox messages asking me why I said this in the video and that was while you are running your pressure washer it does not matter how expensive it is how cheap it is if you from the second that you start your pressure washer up to the second that you turn it off you need to have your wand trigger compressed and it running constantly you do not need to let your pressure washer idle not engaged at all that is how you will burn your pump up. And a lot of people were confused about that. They thought that, you know, why would they even have the option to idle if you are going to burn it up? A lot of people don't know this, but in the owner's manual, every single one of them, it says, do not run your pump for longer than so-and-so time or you will burn it up. Let's look. The first is just a miscellaneous uh, man owner's manual for a pressure washer. The big warning on the top, do not leave unit running longer than one minute without using pump will overheat. I went ahead and I looked up the actual owner's manual for the Simpson pressure washer that I repaired in that video and it says notice allowing the unit to run for more than two minutes without the gun trigger being pulled could cause overheating and damage to the pump. Do not let the pressure washer run for more than two minutes in bypass mode. Turn the engine off and relieve the pressure in the gun during these extended situations. So there it is. It's pretty much like pressure washer manufacturers are setting you up to fail. They know that 90% of homeowners are not going to read their manual. They're not going to know this little tidbit of information. I mean, most people know, yeah, it has to have water hooked up to it. Don't leave it outside where it's going to freeze to the pump and crack. But nobody really understands that if you let it idle without the trigger compressed for a minute, 60 seconds, I mean, who lets it run for five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, and it completely destroys your pump. And then what happens once you have a burned up pump? You bring it to the shop, you're going to pay me a diagnosing fee to tell you that your pump is burned up, that it's going to cost two thirds the price to fix it as it would to you know, buy a new one. You're gonna end up leaving it with me and I'm gonna have an engine sitting there with a bad pump. All right guys, so that's it. That's my trick of the day. If you want your pump to last as long as possible, tie something around your trigger, let it run all the time. Don't let it idle and hopefully that'll save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think about it. Also, if you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Also, I have shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts at Chicanic.com store. Please go check that out. Your support is amazing. Thanks for all the orders so far. Also find us on Instagram at The Real Chicanic where you will see things that I do not post on other social media. Thanks and have a great day.